What's up YouTube? Today I've got a really fun tutorial for you guys. We're going to be tackling this sci-fi themed render and what we're going to make is a sort of abstract animation of kind of a fusion core, the kind of thing that you, like a power core that you see in like all the weird sci-fi games. It's, uh, it's going to be really fun to make and it shouldn't take too long as well. Right, on with the tutorial. Alright, so you've got Blender open. Now we're going to just delete the default cube, so select the cube and hit X and delete. Now. Hit Shift A, add a mesh, and we're going to add an echo sphere. And we're going to leave it as it is. Just um, hit Tab to go into edit mode and select Edge. And you want to hit Edge Split right here. Now, come out of edit mode, so hit Tab again. And hit the tilde key and then hit Free just so you zoom on in. We're going to go to the modifier section. So click on this spanner here and click Add Modifier and we're going to add a smooth modifier. Now you can play with the factor to where you see fit, but don't worry too much about that now because we're going to animate that later. So uh, just yeah, just leave it anywhere. We're going to add another modifier, and this time we're going to add a solidify modifier. So pop the thickness up to about 0 0.04. So add a new modifier, and we're going to add a mirror modifier now. Come down to the bottom and select all the axes and then select bisect on all of them, okay? Add another modifier and you're going to add a wireframe modifier. Now go to your wireframe settings and select this, replace original, you want that un unchecked. So it adds the wireframe on top of the mesh and you can pump the thickness up to where you, wherever you like it or say about there. Now, next step. Shift A, add a mesh, and we're going to add a UV sphere. Now scale that down about there. Add a modifier, and we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier. And apply that. And now we'll go object, shade smooth. So we have a nice smooth sphere now. Cool. So if you just click on camera, hit Alt G, and then Alt R and then rx90 so now just hit gy and bring it out of the sphere and just hit zero and then do it again gy to wherever you wherever you like it really we'll say about here and just yeah now that we've set up a camera we can start playing with the um the smooth parameter on that uh, echo sphere so you can see here we can do these sort of weird sci-fi sort of animation styles so we're going to come down to the timeline here and we're going to make this a five second clip. So we'll set the uh, end frame to 120 and just bring that timeline up and we're going to just animate this really quickly. On the first frame, we'll bring the factor around here to 0 0.07 and make sure you're on for the first frame. Now hit I or have your mouse hovered above the factor to apply keyframe and we are going to do a very simple animation of it opening and closing. So bring this to 61 and bring that factor up to about, let's say about there, and hit I on that to add a keyframe. Now click on this keyframe, hit Shift D and bring that to 121. Uh, hit A on the keyboard, so you select it, all the keyframes, hit T and change that to Bezier now. So we're going to get a nice smooth sort of open and shut. Okay, I don't like the way it, it I think it opens a bit too much, so I'm just going to edit that keyframe and I'm going to bring the factor about here and just hit I twice over that keyframe and we'll watch the animation. I don't like how you can see it's sort of glitching here, so I'm going to go to my modifier settings and I'm going to bring that mirror to the bottom. Let's see if that fixes it. Yeah. So the hierarchy is quite important here on your modifiers. So make sure you have it as such. Smooth modifier. See that icon is there. Uh, solidify here. Wireframe is your third one. And the mirror should be your last. All right, so make sure you're at frame 21 and we're going to just 
we're going to animate the rotation now. So come to your transform settings on your echo sphere. And on rotation, we're going to rotate it on the z-axis. So apply a keyframe on the z-axis on frame 21. And come to frame 101. Set that to 720. Now, just make sure you're on Bezier. Okay, now I think we're ready to start shading the objects. So we have our echo sphere and our sphere inside. We're going to start with the sphere. So just um, pull the time frame to where it's open. Say about here. And we'll go hit Z and then 8 to go into rendered mode. We're going to make the world black. So just bring that all the way down. World settings is just this red thing here. Make sure you're clicking on the sphere and we're going to start texturing it. So come to your material setting. Add a new material and we are going to change this principal shader to an emission shader and we're going to change the color to a nice blue. Okay now pop the strength up to about 20. It looks cool but we want to make it glow a bit so the way you do that is come to your render settings and make sure you're on Eevee and select ambient inclusion bloom that's where the glow is going to come from but it's quite strong there you can see uh screen space uh, sorry screen space reflections and we're going to add motion blur too now come to your bloom just bring that down and bring the intensity down a bit say to about 0.14 cool come to one of the corners and just i always use the top right just when your cursor goes like that just drag this window in and we're going to start shading it. So come up to here, change this to Shader Editor. And this window is, sorry, it's basically the same as your material setting, settings, but this is a node based editor and it's basically, it basically gives you more control over the, um, over all the parameters and all the shading. So we are going to have a bit of fun with this. So you've got your emission shader here and we're going to add a texture. So we're going to add a Musgrave texture first. So add that. Just plug the fac into the color, and you're gonna see that's um, that's overwritten the the color. So now it's white, but you got this cool sort of cow pattern on it now. So um, hit Shift A, and add a converter, and we're gonna add a color ramp, and we're gonna put the color back in now. So um, just add your color ramp in between those two nodes. Click on this little thing on the white side, and click on the white now under it, and we're gonna make that blue again so bring it up about here and you can bring that further in if you want it more bright and you can dim it by bringing the black one you can see you start getting these weird things but we're gonna do even more of it now so again hit shift a add texture add noise texture and plug the fact into the vector and you're gonna get all these crazy sort of patterns now if we zoom in I'm just going to turn the overlays off now so yeah you can see all these crazy patterns and you can um, you can really uh, play around with the scale so I'm going to do sort of a, a low scale on the noise texture and we'll say 2 on the noise and 5 on the musgrave now add a colour ramp again and just place that there again and what you can see now is when we drag this black one in, you get this really cool uh, sort of disintegration rather than a fade. It's really cool. And we're going to animate that now. So zoom out a bit, go to frame 61, click on the color ramp, this first one, hover your mouse over the, the position and hit I. So that's going to add a keyframe on that. Come to the first frame. And we're going to bring this all the way down to about here. Click I and now just duplicate that keyframe again. Shift D and bring that to 121. Hit A, T and select Bezier so we have a smooth animation. Now if you're not seeing these keyframes, make sure you have your sphere selected and your color ramp selected. If you play that, you're going to see this really cool thing. I just want to add a bit more movement 
because you can see the uh, the texture stops moving there. It's you can keep it how it is, but I'm gonna I'm gonna add a bit more. So make sure you have Node Wrangler installed. So if you go to Edit Preferences again on your Add-ons, just search in here, search Node Wrangler. Just make sure that that bit's checked. Uh, it's just gonna make it a lot easier for you. Just all you got to do now is click on this noise texture and hit Control T, and you get a mapping node. This will allow you to um, animate the position of the texture. On the rotation, on any axis, we'll do the Y in this case. Hit I, come to one, uh, sorry, come to your last frame and do 360 so it's a seamless loop on the rotation. And now when you play it, you'll see there's constant movement now. Just adds a bit more to it. Cool, so that's pretty much done there. Now. We're going to start texturing this. Leave the light where it is. I like to have a light on it. And we are going to add a new material. We're affecting the echosphere now. So we've added a new material. We're going to keep that as principal shader. And we're going to drop the uh, base color down to about here and bring the metallic all the way up. And I'll bring the roughness down a little bit. We'll say about 0.3. But you can't, you can't, you can have it fully rough if you want. Depends if you want reflections. I'll say about there. Just put the color where you like. You can make it darker if you want, or you can make it lighter. I think a nice gray looks good. Hit Shift A, and we're going to go to Vector, and we're going to add a bump node. Plug the normal into the normal, and hit Shift A, texture, and we're going to add a Voronoi texture. Plug the color into the height of the bump node, and you're going to see this cool crackling effect. You can play with the scale and just put it wherever you like. Now, and you can move the light as well if you want it somewhere else. So if you just make sure you put your overlays back on, click on the light, hit G, and just you can just sort of move it a bit closer if you want, or I don't know, maybe about here. It's up to you really. It's wherever you like it. I'm just gonna come to the camera and I'm gonna make the focal length a bit wider so we've got a bit more room. Okay, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Only thing left now is just to play with a bit with the color settings. So we're gonna make the color manage, come to the color management in your scene settings, and we are going to make it high contrast, and just drop gamma to 0.9. And then all you gotta do is actually render the file. So if you come over here to your render settings, Make sure you're saving the file somewhere that you can find it. So I just put a single blender renders. And I'm just going to call it Sci Fi Fusion Core. Now, change this to FFmpeg video. Make sure your encoding is set to MP4, video codec H264, and output quality perceptually lossless. Now we're just going to go to render and hit render animation. And then you just gotta wait for it to render, and there you have it, your very own personal fusion core. All for you. Alright, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, hope you learned a lot, as always, and thank you for watching, and please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content, and check out my website where you can download this render. It's nevmotion.co.uk.